Welcome back friends. I got something kind of fun to share with you. We have a log truck that's delivering a load of very old boom logs. Those are logs that have been in the water for probably well over a hundred years uh, that they recently took out and then a friend of mine uh, offered me a good deal on a whole load and so I bought them. So they're delivering them and right now and we're going to unload them. So you might enjoy this. Uh, you get to see a self-loading or unloading log truck. Right here will work. Oh, right here? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Right, right up. Or this way or what? It doesn't really matter. I got a grapple on there so I can I can uh, move them around. What do you think, Sweet Loaf? Can I climb up there and help? <laughs> You're too little to climb up there and help. But you can help Papa when he's gone. Okay. Throw your ball away from the stack of What do you think? I'm excited. It's so cool to see him do it, isn't it? How much was it for the load? I have no idea. So I think it was $1,000. I don't know. Is that right? I don't know.
How about you jump on Papa's big logs instead? No, I just want to hop in the cracker. What are you going to do in there? I'm going to look and see what's look going at, on. Look at me when you talk to me. I'm going to go in there and see what's going on. Okay, just this once. Okay, can you open the door for me and lift me up? Wasn't that an incredible machine? It always amazes me what man invents to make his job easier, to perform a job, uh, something purpose-built like that. Just so cool, uh, just in incredible. When you think about what it would take to unload and to move around that much weight, that many logs so efficiently and so quickly, and not only that, but to be able to load it itself, transport them over many miles on highways at high speed. I mean, it really, truly is incredible. We really overlook uh, the ingenious uh, nature uh, of man and inventors. So I went ahead and, and I ordered a second load that they just dropped off here uh, because it was such a good value. It was a, a whole load of these boom logs, uh, was $1,000 a load. And there's probably, goodness, there's gotta be cords of wood in there, at least, maybe more. Uh, and here, for fir, split fir firewood, you know, you're know, you coming up close on $300 a cord. So that's a pretty good value. Of course, you gotta, you gotta do the work yourself, but uh, that's half the fun anyway. So let's take a look at these logs um, and I'll show you what makes a boom log, bog, boom log a boom log and why some of these might be really good for milling because the fact that they've been in the water for so long makes them absolutely gorgeous inside. So the problem is, is, is that they're full of metal. So we might have to get a metal detector before we mill it, but there's some pretty good sized ones here. So let's take a look at them and then we'll wrap things up. You can tell they've been in the water a long time just from several things, but these holes that were bored in them, this is how they link them together with great big heavy chains. And look how round they are. They're round from just all of the years and years of bumping up against each other uh, from the wakes of the ships and the boats and the barges. But they're incredibly sound. It's, uh, if you look at this, even though they're old, uh, they're absolutely rock solid. There's no rot. I mean, there's just a little bit of, I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with them. They're absolutely uh, solid and in great shape. Great firewood, aren't they? So the mill is very leery of these things. They don't like them. It breaks sawyers out into cold sweat when they think about running through these through their highly efficient, expensive computerized sawmills because they've got steel in them. And one piece of steel can absolutely grenade uh, a modern day sawmill. So that's very, very dangerous. So they're not willing to do it. Now, small custom saw, sawmills or homeowner, professional homeowner sawmills, you know, we can take that risk. And that's what's kind of nice about the Lucas is if we do hit something, we can sharpen it ourselves and have spare blades and stuff. But what's typically done is you get a metal detector, as I said, and you can go through it and, and pick up any metal and dig it out that there, there may be. Now, Mrs. W said she saw uh, a chain or something hanging from one of these and I I don't know that I saw that but some of these are pretty good size you know that would make uh, uh, pretty good saw logs you know that one's pretty good size and that one right there but very interesting it's gonna be cool that's a big one right there all of those are, are suitable it's gonna be really interesting to see what's inside of them I think the majority of them will be firewood the uh, gentleman that brought these out I, he was the one that was picking them. I said, if you could bring us some smaller ones uh, for firewood, if you had them, uh, or short chunks, that would be great. But that's gonna uh, that's gonna keep us busy for a while. I'll bet. Uh, well, I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> I should, I, I'm, I'm gonna bleep it. I think I may have mentioned earlier in the video how much firewood's in there. I think I'm gonna bleep that out. It, see who can guess. Give me your guess, best guess in this deck right here. How many cords of firewood? do you think this would produce? These are long, don't forget how long they are. There's some short ones there, but the majority of them are, goodness, gotta be in excess of 40 feet or so. Very cool, that's gonna be great. All right, I've got some uh, news on the sawmill front. I'll share with that next, share with you next time. But for now, I guess we're done. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned. We will be back in action with the sawmill tomorrow, tomorrow's video. So thanks for watching. Please keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your families, and we'll see you all on the next video.